Chapter 10 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 10. In the Silent Wigwam Meditates the Old Pajé. Iracema leans against the rugged trunk that serves as a stay. Her large black eyes, fixed on the forest clearings, and sunk with sorrow, gaze with long and tremulous looks, threading and unthreading the seed-pearl of teardrops that bedew her cheeks. The Ara, perched on the opposite shelf, views with sad green eyes her beautiful lady. From the day that saw the white warrior tread Tabajara land, she had been forgotten by Iracema. The rosy lips of the maid never open now, to let her pick from them the fruity pulp or the paste of the green maize. Nor ever now did the sweet hand caress her or smooth the golden plumage of her head. If she spoke, if she spoke the beloved name of her mistress, the smile of Iracema was never bent upon her, nor did the ear of the mistress even appear to know the voice of that companion and friend which had once been so dear to her heart. Woe to her! The Tupi nation called her Jandaya, because in her joy she made the plains resound with her vibrating song. But now, sad and silent, because disdained by her mistress, she appeared no more the beautiful Jandaya, but rather the homely Urutão, which knows only to groan. Low sloped the sun over the Serra heights. Its rays hardly gilded the highest crests. The hushed melancholy of evening, which precedes the silence of night, began to oppress the various sounds of the prairie. Here and there a nightbird, deceived by the thicker darkness of the forest, screeched aloud. The old man raised his bald forehead. Was it not the cry of the Inuma bird that awoke the ear of Araken? said he, wondering. The maiden trembled. Already she was out of the wigwam, and back to answer the pajé's question. It is the war cry of Kaubi the brave. When the second screech of the midnight bird reached her ear, Irasema ran towards the forest, fleet as a doe pursued by the hunter. She never drew breath till she had reached the clearing, which lay in the wood like a long lake. The first thing that met her eye was Martin, sitting tranquilly upon a sapopema bough and eyeing all that occurred. Opposite him, a hundred Tabajara warriors, with Irapuan at their head, formed a circle. The brave Kaubi, his eye flashing with anger, and his weapons grasped in his muscular arm, stood up before them all. Irapuan had demanded the stranger, and the guy had answered him simply, Slay Kaubi first. The daughter of the pajé flew like an arrow. Behold her graceful form shielding Martin from the blows of the braves. Irapuan roared with rage, as roars the ounce attacked in its lair. Daughter of Araquin, said Kaubi in a whisper, lead the stranger to the wigwam. Araquin alone can save him. Irasema turned towards the white warrior. Come! He remained immovable. If the stranger will not come, Irasema will die with him. Martin arose, but far from following the maiden, he walked straight towards Irapuã. His sword flashed in the air. Chief, the braves of my race have never refused combat. If he whom thou beholdest did not seek it, it was because his fathers have forbidden him to shed blood in the land of hospitality. The Tabajara chief yelled with joy. His powerful arm wielded the tomahawk. But the two champions had scanty time to measure each other with the eye. When the first blow was being struck, 
Calbi and Iracema were between them. In vain the daughter of Araquém besought the Christian. Vainly did she throw her arms round him, endeavoring to withdraw him from the combat. On his side, Calbi as vainly strove to provoke Irapuã and to draw upon himself the wrath of the chief. At a sign from Irapuã, the warrior seized the brother and sister, and the combat began. Suddenly, the hoarse sound of the war trumpet thundered through the forest. The sons of the Serra trembled as they recognized the boom of the seashell and the war cry of the Pichiguaras, those lords of the shores which the fallen trees shade. The echo came from the great wigwam, which perhaps the enemy was at that moment attacking. The warriors flew there, carrying with them their chiefs. With the stranger only remained the daughter of Araquim. End of chapter 10